Hino, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> no, I just wanted to be, uh, give a shout out in two seconds to um, Amanda Coulson, uh, Tessa, and Hino that just arrived on the BA flight. So they are our last delegates to arrive. We're thrilled that they're here from the Bahamas. And so, <laughs> Tessa and Amanda are just getting a coffee. They'll be making their entrance in a sec. So give them a big round of applause when they come in as well. So that we, we uh, get to the bar on time, we are going to start and then people can join in. And these are pop-up sort of micro presentations. As I said, we really wanted to engage as many stories in this conversation as we could. Um, so you can weave in and out a little bit or um, again, if you want to talk to the individuals more about their projects after the event, we won't be stopping for question time, but do capture them later on when you're, we're having the, uh, the welcome reception. And if it does, it does look like rain, so we are moving the reception inside just so everybody knows. So instead of um, individual presentations, I'm going to run through the list now. Um, and we're kicking off with Rosie Gordon-Wallace, who, as you guys know, is the director of the Diaspora Vibe Incubator. And she is talking today about making a case for international cultural exchange um, with the, um, you, you've, you've abbreviated this, um, the Diaspora Vibe, and it's the Cultural Arts Incubator. Reviews of the 2017 uh, International Cultural Exchange to Guadalupe. <laughs> We ask for a round of applause. <laughs> I was going to say, they were going to make an entrance regardless, so we might as well have uh, looked out for it. Following Rosie's presentation, we've got Raquel um, Panowansky. Uh, Sarah, help me out with Raquel Panowansky. I did Panowansky, thank you. And Raquel has just emailed me. She was really hoping to be here in person, but her father is unwell, and she's decided to stay with him. And so uh, I'm, I'll be emailing back with all of our regards um, from the entire delegate group. And uh, instead, she has sent a film in conversation with Sarah Herman. Of course, we're going to hear from Sarah as well tomorrow. And uh, we will be airing that film. We then have O'Neill Lawrence, Senior Curator of the National Gallery of Jamaica, and he'll be speaking about the Jamaica Biennale 2017, and I think particularly about their international program that they instigated at the last Biennale and again this year. Uh, we then have Jason Fitzroy Jeffers, filmmaker, who you've already been introduced to, and he'll be talking about new adventures in Caribbean cinema. Then we have Pablo Leon de la Barra, who is going to be talking in his role as a board member of the Davidoff Art Initiative about their progress over the last year. And then Vanessa Selk, who is from the um, French Cultural and Education, she's the French Cultural and Education Attaché um, in Miami. And she's going to be talking about an exciting new project that they're launching next year, 2018, the Caribbean Arts Festival in Miami. So I think once the presenters have finished, if the next presenter would just like to to get up, introduce themselves, and kickstart their micro-presentation. You won't hear from me again until I point the direction to the bar at the end. Okay, thank you. I promise you 10 minutes. Um, Rosie Gordon-Wallace, first of all, thank you very much for having me um, to share with this group, our peers, um, the work that DASPA Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator has been doing for the past 20 years. I'm Rosie Gordon Wallace, and I'm the founder of DASPA Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator. I like to walk around, but I won't be able to do this with the mic today. And um, I want to just share with you, first of all, the, the vision that we had. Oh, so I can walk around? Sure, my girl. I'm going too far. <laughs> so that um, I can share with you what we have been doing for the past 20 years. This year in 2017, I'm going to, like you, put away the notes because it's so restricting, right, Franklin? This year, we went to Guadeloupe. We have paid attention, Diaspora Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator has paid attention to the linguistic divide in the Caribbean or companionship of the Caribbean, the geographic landscape of the Caribbean. And oftentimes, the Dutch gets left off. So we made sure that in doing the English, the Spanish, the French, that we also included the Dutch. So the, 
we, we do an island every year um, in an international cultural exchange, and I'm going to go on record. These exchanges are funded by the Miami-Dade Cultural Arts Incubator, Cultural Arts Affairs. Michael Spring is the director. We could not do it without them. So we get funding to do the work. We take Miami artists, and the groups are 15 to 18, and sometimes crazily up to 22. What happens with 22 is that the logistics gets off. The bus is one too tight, and you have to make some other arrangements. But this year, we traveled. So let me go back one. We do a country three times. That is a formula. And it's not three consecutive years. Magically, let's say for argument's sake, we did Jamaica in 2012. We'll do it again in 2014, 15, and then we'll go back again afterwards. And Guadeloupe, this year in 20. 17 April was our second time to Guadeloupe. So that what happens is, the first time you go to the island, they don't believe you're coming. You know, you, they, you come and they don't believe you're coming. The second time you go to the island, you have a community. We always have somebody on the ground to work with us. That person does all of the logistics that Natalie has done for this wonderful conference, along with your team. And by the time you get there the second time, you now have friends and a community. The third time, the real work happens. The magic, the artists expect you to come. We do our studio visits. It really is a mission of a chat session. And it sounds um, ordinary, but it's Miami artists living in diaspora coming back to the Caribbean to have these conversations. It is transformative. I was just saying to Lisa, I wish that I could quantify what happens in the lives of the artists when they come back to Miami. We don't have a formula. Um, I mean, we have a process, but there's no formula. I don't take two white people, one black person, an Indian, and a Chinese. It doesn't work that way. But the Caribbean is a little bit of all of that. And so we end up having everybody. And you know, what happens is when we take first world developed world, privileged folk who happen to be doing work that conceptually looks like work that we're accustomed to in the Caribbean. So a white American doing tropicalist work. When they travel with us, I mean, you get the oohs and the ahs, but you watch them in diaspora, outside of diaspora, because we are a diaspora here, transform. That is what I would love to quantify as we move forward. So that's, that was our mission. When I put them up, I'm going to read the stuff. This is too bright a group. Um, we've been doing this since 1999. We have done over 300 and something artists. The last time I did this presentation was 270. 270 around the Caribbean is a significant pool of artists. Um, I tell my friends, if you're going to send kids and you tell me a week before, I can tell you where to go and find something to eat. We have made real community partners in these countries, in our countries. And when I started doing the work, saying that you were going back to the Caribbean to do contemporary work was like a hiccup. People would say, what? You know, you're gonna do what? So I, it's not that I don't like traditional work. It's not that I don't like intuitive work. It's not that I don't like craft. But that's not where we do the work. So, these are some of the countries. This is Guadeloupe. Um, you will recognize some of the folks there. That's Jolie, Joel um, from Learta Cap, Aisha, um, Guy Gabon, who welcomed us tremendously, Trini. So right there, this is the group that went from Miami. <clears throat> this is us in a little bit more with Papa Roy in the middle. Roy travels with me, not only as my husband, because I need the backup, you know, but <laughs> He does the logistics, he makes sure that the 27 suitcases get put on the plane, you know, those kinds of things. And then he puts on his artistic hat and does the photography. So I can't tell you, and wherever you are, I mean, big up. We <clears throat> One of the things that I believe is that when you eat with someone, when you invite somebody to your home to eat with them, 
it changes. So we have communal breakfast and communal dinner. I wear two aprons at night. I hand an apron to an artist. You join me in the kitchen, I will cook. And I, after the second day, we invite the local artists to come and join us. So we start with 18, and most nights there are 20, 25 of us eating dinner. This is Kelly's studio. She was so gracious. She's, she invited us to a traditional Hindu, Hindi, Hindu, honey, what is a Hindi um, dinner? Um, where we, many of us had not eaten like that. We ate on the ground and passed. The, the men served us as women. We were saying, yes! <laughs> this is Aisha Tandi with Bell's work. I'm just going to show you some images of some of the works. The first time we go to the islands, we don't do an exhibition. The second time we mount an exhibition with the artist with whom we now have a relationship. And the third time we look deep at the country and move, move the work forward. That um, piece up here is a trap. Many of the young people know about, about trap music. That's Aisha Tandi with Bell's trap where she comes out of the trap with the tap music. Trap music. This is Giga Bond's um, in, on-site insta um, installation at the Memorial Act Museum. It is spectacular. It's absolutely spectacular. So we go out into the community, the Chamber of Commerce uses us, we go to the school, we do workshops, um, we go to studio visits as well. It really is uh, 10 days of intense work. This is Jamaica. We're heading to Jamaica in 2018, God's willing. Next week is my grand panel. Franklin's gonna make sure everything works right. Um, Jamaica is always difficult to do because I am Jamaican and I get so wound up in making sure it goes well. But our last two visits were really good and this is Sculpture Park there. This is um, Suriname. We've been to Suriname three times. Um, the Dutch have a special way of making you feel like family. If you have not been to the end of the Dutch islands, there's just something about them that, that makes it really special. They had this banner all over the country for us. So we were like, we also went into the country with the Consul General from Miami, and she brought us in as diplomatic staff. So we were bigging up the whole time. Here we are again, um, Suriname at Ready Text Gallery with Monique and Kurt Nahar and the gang there. Just trying to show a little bit of the work that we have shown over the years. This is Juana Valdez. Every year we, let me back up. Last year was our 20th year and we awarded four artists $5,000 to take time off to sit in their studio and work, think about a deeper practice. You cannot think deep when you have two jobs and a husband and a wife and children. Listen, I hear you, you can't do it. We want to do it every five years. $5,000 doesn't sound like a lot of money, perhaps to some of you, but to us as a small organization, it's really big. And Juana produced this work with us when we were in Antigua. This is us again. This is Jamaica. Where is this? No, Barbados. That's not Barbados? Of course. No, man. Is Harmony Hall? Okay. Hush. <laughs> See? <laughs> This is St. Martin, and I'm done. I'm almost done. And I had to put this in, because really and truly, black lives do matter. 